The Milky Way, too, is just one of billions of galaxies in space. Lots of room for cosmic neighbors, as one astronomy professor put it back in 1960, when he began looking for them. My name is Frank Drake, and I conducted the first modern, scientifically-based search for evidence of extraterrestrial intelligent life. Frank Drake is seen as a legend among astronomers today. In 1960, the search for extraterrestrials still belonged only to the realm of science fiction. But Drake saw the chance to expand humanity's horizons and started the initial attempt at establishing contact with potential beings on distant planets. The amount of stars Drake could study was massive, so he invented a complex formula to estimate the number of detectable civilizations in our galaxy. Although Drake's equation has no answer, yet, it remains a widely accepted tool for scientists scanning the universe for other forms of life. Drake used it to focus his work, too. Our search concentrated on the two nearest stars. We searched with a one-channel radio receiver for two months at the radio frequency of the hydrogen atom, uh, and we found no signals from those two stars. Despite the lack of success, Drake breathed life into a new science, earning some newfound acceptance for the field of study. When we speak of life beyond Earth, what we generally mean is, of course, intelligent life, something resembling our noble selves. It is now okay to talk about life elsewhere, or intelligent life elsewhere, whereas a decade or two ago, it wasn't okay. Statements such as these had never been made before on American television. In the 60s, the USA broke out in SETI fever. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence even occupied politicians. The government distributed research funds generously. In 1963, the Arecibo telescope was opened in Puerto Rico. It had a 300-liter diameter and lay embedded in a valley basin. With such a super instrument, the hunt for signals from alien civilizations finally seemed to make sense. In 1977 in Ohio, a signal was discovered. Calculations resulted in a puzzling combination of numbers. Astronomer Jerry Eman noted his excitement on the computer printout. But after 72 seconds, the signal suddenly disappeared. Even today, it remains unexplained where the wow signal actually came from. The SETI community expected more news from the universe any day. Yet beyond the noise of space, the sensitive detectors of Arecibo picked up nothing. After several years of silence, the disappointment spread far and wide. Donors began to doubt whether it made sense to continue. The universe initially had just one message. There's no one out there. Humanity is alone. Now keep in mind, our galaxy has a few hundred billion star systems. So, you know, if you re reduced each one of those stars to the size of a grain of sand, that would be a dump truck full of sand. And the amount of sand we've actually looked at carefully would easily fit into the small palm of your hand. So we've just begun to actually search our own galaxy for other societies. It doesn't surprise me we haven't found them yet. Welcome to Are We Alone? I'm Seth Shostak, and today we're going to be talking about the new Allen Telescope Array and how this new instrument is going to greatly speed up the search for ET signals. Personally, I'm not interested in finding ET 500 years from now. I'm hoping we're going to find it in the next couple of decades while I might still be walking the planet. So we're going to go to a break now. We'll be right back with Are We Alone? South of San Francisco lies one of the richest areas in the U.S., the Silicon Valley home of numerous computer companies. Seth Shostak and some of his SETI research colleagues settled here because many people with a penchant for unusual ideas live in this area, and some of them have the necessary funds at their disposal to donate a few million here and there to projects like SETI. It's hard to believe that 30 and 40 years ago, this was all agricultural land. They grew fruit here. The fruit trees are gone now. 
the orchards are gone. Shostak works as an astronomer for the SETI Institute in Mountain View, an independent research installation whose goal is to explore the origin and amount of life in the universe. Their most important objective is the establishment of the Allen Telescope Array in Northern California. Financing for this project has posed the greatest challenge for Shostak and his colleagues. For about 15 years, SETI was a NASA program, at least most SETI in this country, was being sponsored by NASA. It wasn't very expensive. It was one one thousandth of the total NASA budget, even when it was at its height. Now that was all stopped in 1993. That's when the champions of thrift in the U.S. Congress cut all funding to NASA for its SETI activities. Astronomer Jill Tarter was the project director at that time. Suddenly she was out of a job and her life's work went along with it. Losing the NASA funding, that is having Congress terminate the funding for NASA, was incredibly difficult. Uh, it was a huge roller coaster ride. Many of my colleagues and I were pretty devastated. Quitting was not an option for her. Today, Jill Tarter is directing a new SETI project, the construction of the Allen Telescope Array. This is actually the working part of the radio telescope. I always think it looks like Ah, uh, something from the Saturday morning Flash Gordon cartoons, right? The death race. Jill Tarter is the grand dam of SETI research. In 2004, Time magazine chose her as one of the 100 most important people in the world. In the movie Contact, she was played by Jodie Foster. But in 1993, Tarter had no more hope of being paid as a SETI researcher. She understood the need to pull up her sleeves and become independent. We sat around a conference table and we started reading books on how to raise money. And there was only one chapter of each of the books that we read, and that was how to make the big ask. We needed a lot of money and we needed it very quickly, so we had to focus on donors with large potential for giving. Millions were raised to build the array on the lava rock of the Sierra Nevada. Microsoft's co-founder, Paul Allen, financed a big part of the Allen Telescope Array's dishes. The billionaire picked up the $25 million tab for the installation that bears his name. It should be completed within the next few years. You can see a name up on that telescope. Elliot Gillum is on this side. On the other side, if you could see it, is the name Dane Glasgow. These are two young Microsoft uh, engineers who think that our technology is terrific and they they pooled their funds and got a matching grant from from Microsoft for their philanthropic contribution and so they now own this telescope and uh, they enjoy watching it on the webcam and have been helping us out with uh, with some new software okay so everybody can buy one of those telescopes you can buy a telescope and have your name put on it and the uh, the price tags a hundred thousand dollars which is a big number in some sense, but a very small number for a radio telescope. Ever been skeptical of flying saucers? Well, would you believe a real...